If you're just getting started with data analysis in Excel, this is the first formula that you need to know. It's the formula that counts. What does it do in Excel? It allows us to do all kinds of cool things. You wanna create a pie chart in Excel. It's easy with this formula. You wanna create cool tabulated analyses. We can do it in a matter of seconds with this formula. I'm gonna take you through it in the next five or 10 minutes. But if we're meeting for the first time, I'm Chris Mortimer. Welcome to Tiger Spreadsheet Solutions. I love bringing the powerful stuff in Excel to people like you. Before we get started, let me tell you about my Excel cheat sheet. I've laid it out all for you. The 13 techniques, 21 Excel formula that you need to know in a one page downloadable PDF. The link's in the description below the video. And at the moment, it comes with three never seen before videos about my Excel secret weapon. So definitely check that one out. With that said, let's get into this one. So download the download file and work along with me. What are we doing? It's the most basic thing that you want to do in data analysis. We are counting. For example, counting the number of times a value appears in a column. Let's head over to the practice sheet. Let's answer our first question. How many projects in the Tiger Project Manager file are overdue? A typical real world question. How do we answer it? We answer it with the formula that counts. It is, of course, the count if formula. So let's go ahead and put the formula together now. So double click in the overdue cell here, equals count if. Then let's take a second just to understand what Excel is asking for. Excel is asking for a range, then a criteria. So by range, Excel is saying, where are the cells that you want me to look at? Then in criteria, we set a criteria. Excel is going to count the cells that conform to that criteria. In this case, we're just going to say count the cells that contain the text overdue. This is the idea. Are you ready? Let's go ahead, clicking cell D5 now, and then Control Shift and down on the Windows PC, selects to the bottom of the column, then hit the F4 key, because we do need those absolute references. We need those dollar signs because we're going to copy this formula down as we see in just a second. So that's the first part of the formula done. Then we hit column, comma rather, and Excel is asking for the criteria. So we can just click on this cell here. Click on cell G7 because that cell contains the text that, the, that we want to count. So that's the formula done. Just bear in mind, we don't need the absolute references for the second uh, part of the formula because we want that to move down as we're going to see in just a second. So you can close the brackets now, hit enter. And what can we see here? We've got six come through here. So where are we getting that from? Well, I'm just going to count one, two, three, four, five, six. I've counted the number of times that overdue appears and it's six times. That's count if in action. If I put another overdue in, we can see that we've ticked over to seven there. So that's the basic count if formula. What do you think? It's the one formula you need to learn first in data analysis. Let's just copy the formula down now. So you can click and hold on the drag handle, copy the formula down, or uh, we can go control D on the Windows PC, auto fill down. We can see the formula coming coming down there. And once again, now we're counting the number of OKs. How could we validate this? Check the formulas working. Well, we know we've got 20 entries in our data set. If I go control shift down, look at the bottom of Excel where it says count. We have 20 entries in the data set. So 6 and 14 adds up to 20. So that's our basic analysis using Countif. But what I really love about Countif is it allows us to create charts easily. Are you having problems with Excel charts? They're so underutilized, so many people out there having problems. It's because you're not preparing the data. We don't spend enough time preparing the data in Excel to make the charts work. This is the setup we want. Countif makes it all work. Let's select all of the data, including the row headers. Then we can go to insert. What kind of chart do you like? I think a pie chart's good for this one. People on the channel know I love a pie chart. And there it is. That's how easy it is to put it together. I'm going to resize this. And if you'd like to see a well-formatted chart, well, a chart that in my opinion is well-formatted, you can see it on the first sheet there. So we've managed to take the first step in data analysis. We've managed to count and we've managed to create a visual analysis all with the power of Countif. So what's next? Well, you might be saying to me, well, Chris, that's fine. But what if I had a bigger data set? And what if I didn't know the values that appeared in the data set? If it's over and overdue and okay, it's easy. What if you had names, for example, and you didn't know what values were going to appear? How do you even do the Countif formula? Well, there's a couple of nice options in Excel. Firstly, if you're on Excel 365, you can go ahead, 
try the unique formula. So type in unique, open the bracket, and then over to the data that we want to analyze here. So I've gone to cell E5, control shift and down and enter. And you can see that's the power of the unique formula. Now, it's a bit suspicious, isn't it? Because Luna's name appears twice. We're going to see in just a second why that's happening. If you're not on Excel uh, 365, you can, of course, go to data and then remove duplicates just here. Select the data range first. That's going to allow you to get those unique values. So that's how we get the unique values. If we got them, we can then go ahead and practice again the count if formula. So now how many projects for each project manager? And we've got Biff, Betty and Luna, our hardworking canine project managers. So we're going to say equal equals count if again, open brackets, the range. Well, it's different now, isn't it? We want to look at the project managers, control shift down. Now, what do we need to remember? F4 on the Windows PC, those dollar signs are going in. Now we hit comma and you can see Excel's asking, for the next part of the formula, the criteria. Which cells do you want me to count? I'm going to use the keyboard. You can see just underneath the formula, difficult to see, I've navigated to the cell that contains the project manager name, in this case, Betty. We don't need an absolute reference there. You also don't need to close the bracket in Excel if you're doing a simple formula. I'm going to hit return and we can see five has gone in there. So I'm going to just double click this time and the formula have gone down. I'm going to check that the references are still accurate just checking column E there. And I can see because we've got the absolute references in there, the um, formula is accurate. What I want to point out to you now, how could we validate this? Well, we know we should add everything up because if we've counted everything, everything should be accounted for. So Alt plus on the Windows PC. And what can we see? We've got a value of 19 there. We've actually got a value of 19. So what's happened? Well, Countif has allowed us to understand that there's a problem with the data. We've got a data cleansing issue. And this is how you can use Countif to find those unique values and then to do any data cleansing you need to do. Now, I know, I did a bit of preparation. I know that this cell, uh, Luna has a space after it. So just keep your eye on cell H15 here. I'm going to delete the space and hit enter. And you probably saw we ticked over to seven there. So using Countif to help us cleanse validate data. How about that? The next step, what if we wanted to look at two criteria? So a question now is how many projects for each project manager? We've done that. Question three, how many of Betty's projects, poor Betty, she's the Labrador next door, how many of Betty's projects are overdue? Why is that interesting to us? It's interesting because it's a two criteria analysis, a two criteria analysis. We want to look at the name of the project manager and see the project status. Is the project overdue? We want to check on two columns. Can we do that using Countif? Not quite, but we can do it using Countif sister, which is Countif. So let's go ahead, put the formula together. Now I'm going to go to a full screen view uh, to give you the best view of the action here. So equal equals Countifs plural. You can see we've got an S on the end there and then open the bracket. Now you can see the requirements are slightly different. We've got criteria range one, and then criteria. Then after that, we have criteria range two and then criteria. So different, but kind of similar at the same time. It's the range and then the criteria. But with countifs plural, we can do it any number of times. So first, let's go to the project manager column, the criteria range, control shift down. F4 is going to get the dollar signs in, comma. And I'm really paying attention to what Excel is asking for next. Excel is now asking for the criteria. So this is going to be Betty's name. That reference is a relative reference, doesn't need any dollar signs. So now comma, and once again, pay attention to what Excel is asking for. Excel is asking for criteria range two. So there, we're going to go to our project status column, control shift down on Windows PC. What do we need to do? F4, absolute reference, dollar signs are in, and then comma again. And we want to count the cells that contain overdue. So I'm just going to click on this cell here, I12. That does need to be an absolute reference because we're going to copy this formula down. We want it to keep looking at that cell. And that's our count ifs formula. I'm just sense checking that. How is it looking? I'm going to hit enter now. And we can see the formula has gone in there. I'm going to go, going to go ahead and auto fill down. Control D here. We can see we've got three and three and zero. So we need to check, don't we? Always need to check. Do the same thing two different ways. Control shift right and down. Alt A T is going to put the filters on here. I'm just going to filter for Betty's entries and we're expecting to see three 
overdue projects there. One, two, three. I can see the overdue projects. And then we could go ahead if we wanted to uh, select the data here. Let's go for a column chart this time. Insert and column chart here. And you can see because we're pre prepared the data, we're pre prepared the data using the counter formula. Chart creation is actually very simple, very easy for us to do. So make sure you give the counter formula a try, guys, and don't forget to download our, your Excel cheat sheet. I've laid out for you all the stuff you need to know. The counter formula, though, this is the first thing you need to know in data analysis. I'll see you in the next video.